Um, the next speaker is somebody who's done so much good work in writing, in speaking, and in media appearances, and in fighting off the uh, extremists, shall we say, in question time audience after question time audience, and speaking up for the dispossessed through his weekly column. Please welcome Owen Jones. Friends, it is 10 years since we marched together on that freezing cold February day. And I have to say, looking around at these signs, I feel pretty emotional today. Because we stood there and we said together, not in our name. And we warned of the horrifying consequences which would be unleashed. And I must say, friends, we have no idea about how awful those consequences would be. There can be no sense of vindication in this room, given the blood and chaos that consumed Iraq following the invasion and the occupation. Now, we all saw through that pretext the lies and the spin about those weapons of mass destruction. We listened to Scott Ritter, a US Republican voter uh, who was the chief UN weapons inspector, when he said in 2002, since 1998, Iraq has been fundamentally disarmed. We listened to Robin Cook, the former foreign secretary who had himself been party to intelligence report after intelligence report, when on resigning he said, Iraq probably has no weapons of mass destruction in the commonly understood sense. We saw through any shred of an argument for the legality of that war, which is why Kofi Annan, the former UN Secretary General, said in 2004 that this war was illegal, as did that notorious lefty Sir Michael Wood, the former legal advisor for the Foreign Office, when he said clearly the invasion was contrary to international law. We saw through any pretense of any humanitarian motivations. We knew of the decades of Western support for dictatorship after dictatorship, from Saudi Arabia to Kazakhstan. And indeed, one of those, the great cheerleaders of the war, Tony Blair, at this moment is in the pay of the dictatorship of Kazakhstan to the tune of eight million pounds a year. It was the CIA, as we know, who helped support the Ba'athists when they came to power. They gave them lists of communists who were promptly slaughtered. We, the West armed and supported the Iraqi dictatorship against Iran. When Jeremy Corbyn here stood up in Parliament in 1988, and damned the West for its support for Saddam Hussein after the gassing of the Kurds at Halabja. He was a lone and courageous voice. And that is why I am as ever proud to stand on a platform with a man <laughs> who is dedicated by the also, we must never forget this, the terrible toll that sanctions had on the Iraqi people, half a million Iraqi children who had died, according to UNICEF. And Madeleine Albright, then US ambassador to the UN, said it was a price worth paying. So much for humanitarian considerations. Now I want to talk briefly about the human cost. And there's something a bit grubby about talking about how big a pile of bodies is. But when they said that chaos would not ensue that Western troops would be met with flowers in the streets. Of course, in the first seven years alone, over 12,000 people died and over 1,000 suicide bombs. They said Al-Qaeda was in Iraq. It was not, but it absolutely consumed Iraq following the invasion when every single Al-Qaeda affiliated or inspired group consumed that land. Now in terms of the estimates, it ranges the death toll, whether it be the Iraqi Family Health Survey, which was funded by several Iraq government agencies who claimed in the first three years over 150,000 died violent deaths, whether it be Lancet who thought over 650,000 Iraqis died, and friends, estimates range up to a million. Now the violence isn't subsiding. Last year was one of the bloodiest years in Iraq for many years. When they said there'd be no humanitarian crisis, over four million Iraqis were displaced from their homes, over two million of them in Iraq, the rest in neighboring countries. 
Now I want to give just one example of an atrocity that was committed in Iraq. One of the atrocities we marched against in this room. On the 28th of April, just in 2003, just after Western troops invaded Iraq, uh, in Fallujah, the city of Fallujah, many people came out on the streets and they protested against the local US occupation in the school. They were met by gunfire, unarmed protesters, and 17 were killed. As anti-occupation sentiment rose in that city and the US lost control of it, they then launched an initial onslaught in April 2004 in which hundreds of Iraqis died. Even the leading US-backed politician in Iraq, Adnan Pachachi, said that it was unacceptable and illegal. But they failed to reconquer Fallujah. And they, they waited until George Bush had been safely re-elected and they stormed that city in 2004. Hundreds of civilians died. They used white phosphorus, which literally strips the skins of people's bodies. They used depleted uranium, which has caused infant abnormalities and cancers to soar right across Iraq. Al Jazeera broadcast horror, horrifying pictures of decapitated infants and burned babies. Now, if those sorts of atrocities have been committed by an anti-Western dictatorship, then the cheerleaders of Iraq would be the first to speak out and condemn those sorts of barbarities and call for intervention. But David Aronovich, one of the cheerleaders from the war, described it as a grim necessity. It was not a grim necessity, it was a crime and a barbaric crime at that. Now, democracy. So I'm going to quote a former CIA agent who was installed originally as Prime Minister of Iraq by the occupation authorities, Ayad Alawi. He said people are doing the same things as in Saddam's time and worse. It's an appropriate comparison, he said. People are remembering Saddam and the precise things we fought against are happening again. Since October 2011 in Iraq, thousands have been rounded up by security forces directly loyal to the Prime Minister al-Maliki. There were several tortures and killings of those political opponents rounded up. Now according to again, those notorious lefties, Human Rights Watch, they said this, after decades of dictatorship, occupation and terrorism, the Iraqi people today have a government that is slipping further into authoritarianism and doing little to make them safer. They spoke of draconian, uh, draconian, draconian measures against opposition uh, supporters. Iraq is now 150th out of 179th in the World Press Freedom Index. Uh, according again to the US government funded Freedom House, Iraq is six for civil liberties and six for political rights, seven being the worst. No wonder the Iraq expert Tom Dodge at the LSE said that Iraq is heading towards an incredibly, dictate, uh, incredibly destructive dictatorship. No wonder then that a recent Zogby poll, a very reputable polling agency of Iraqis, found that only 13% thought they were better off, whilst 23% said it was as bad as Saddam Hussein and 42% worse. Friends, Everything they said was wrong. They were wrong about weapons of mass destruction. They were wrong about being met with flowers. They were wrong about the human cost. They were wrong about establishing a flourishing democracy. And what a cost to be so horribly wrong. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqis dead, as well as US and UK soldiers. And that is why we must remember when we marched when we warned of what would happen, when we said, not in our name. And we must say this now, louder than ever, never, never, never again.